Hey guys, what's up? My name is Elizabeth and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this video, we're going to be talking about Bible reading plans. And so I decided to make this video the day before New Year's Eve because when New Year's Eve comes, a lot of people like to make New Year's resolutions. We kind of put in stuff we want to change or habits that we want to do. And I think one of the great habits that we should get into if we haven't or if we are into it, but we would like to improve in, is the discipline of daily Bible reading, getting into the scripture daily. Now, it's going to look different for everyone. And so that's why I want to talk about different Bible reading plans, because there are different types of reading plans out there. And afterwards, you guys can decide which one you believe will be the best during this season of your life to help you grow in your walk with the Lord. So with that being said, let's jump right in and get started. I actually did that on the first take. Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> So, why do we need a Bible reading plan? So, what's, what's the point of it? And I wanted to talk about this first so that you can understand why I'm even doing this video. So, the first reason why we should have a Bible reading plan is to avoid taking scripture out of its context. If we just open the Bible randomly and point to a passage, it can be easily taken out of context because we don't know what's going around in the surrounding verses. Another reason for a Bible reading plan is that it helps us to see, helps us to grasp the bigger picture. As I was talking about not taking the verse out of context, well, the opposite of not doing that is by looking at the entire passage and getting the grasp of what it is saying through the bigger picture. Honestly, how many of us would spend our time reading Leviticus or Numbers? Let me tell you, there's a lot of genealogies in there. First Chronicles is another, First and Second Chronicles are another one. Those are passages that, that we might not be necessarily read all the time, but it's still great for us to read it because number one is God's word. So that should tell us, number one, that it's important to read. And it helps us to grasp the bigger picture. The thing is that it helps us to maintain the discipline of scripture reading. So when you have a Bible reading plan, it would usually have each day for you to read a certain passage or a certain verse. Um, and so with that, it helps us get into that habit of daily opening our Bible and reading it. The first type of Bible reading plan is called the 88 day plan. And this plan pretty much takes you through the entire Bible in three months. Yes, this is very intense. And I personally have never done that. It has taken me at least a year to read the entire Bible. But if you are an overachiever out there or really want to grasp the entire um, picture of the the story of the Bible, then this is a great plan for you. So it's, it takes a lot of dedication. You have to spend at least three minutes a day each day in the Bible for 88 days. One year classic version. So this is the idea where you end up reading the entire Bible in one year. You, uh, you would do the New Testament and Old Testament one time and you would do Psalms two times. So that is the classic version. Now another one year version is called the one year chronological version. And this is where you do the entire Bible in chronological order of the events of when they happen. Now the side, so one of the cons of this is that you won't get into the New Testament until the very, very end. And so you will be reading through the Old Testament for a very, very long time. Another version that I have done that I don't have in my notes is just the one year um, Bible reading plan where you just go straight through for in the entire Bible for one year. And you, don't not, you do not do Psalms two times, you just do it one time. So then we also have the three year plan. And so this is very much like the classical, I think this is very much of like the classical or chronological. I think you can choose which one you want to do out of those, or you can just do the, what, the standard, which is what I do. I'm calling it the standard, where you just read the entire Bible um, one time, okay? So that would take you three years to do it. I've also seen a two-year plan as well. 
Uh, so another plan that I have not done, but I have heard of is the foundation no 260. This is where you read the Bible five days and then you will take a two day break. Now, in my personal opinion, if you are going to take the two year break, two, sorry, two days break, here's why I suggest doing it. Instead of just saying, oh, I, I don't have a Bible reading to do. Um, I'm going to just take a break. I suggest using those days to just maybe meditate on the passages that you have previously read or work on some other spiritual discipline. Um, so in the foundational 260, it takes believers through the highlighted portion of the Bible. So it does take you through the entire Bible, but it does pick and choose so that you can grasp the entire picture um, for the most part, but it does probably skip over some of the small areas. So I don't know, I'm assuming it might skip over some of the Levitical passages, some of the uh, numbers and chronicles and some of the genealogies, um, because there can be a lot of them. And so another one that I have heard of is called he slash she read and this is where you specifically have a bible reading plan for a specific book so you go by book by book by book so you have a plan for reading matthew in 28 days or something like that or you have proverbs for 31 days something like that where you have a plan so it's not necessarily a plan for reading the entire bible but it is a plan to be able to grasp and see the overview of one specific book now, one thing I didn't put in this video is there are all different types of reading plans to take you through more of a devotional type where it's topical, as in you're struggling with anxiety. So seven days you'll be reading about passages about anxiety. And I do think those are great um, when you're struggling in those specific areas, but I also would say to be careful about those. I, I can be very leery on topical issues sometimes because oftentimes when we do that we take scripture and we form it how we want it to be and that can be dangerous so that's why I like sticking to at least book by book and just grasping the whole entire concept of that um, specific book of the bible instead of doing a topical but there's nothing wrong with topical I just would say that that maybe do that for a time but this should all so be a time where you step back and not look at it topically but look at it um with the with the verse itself and then from there you come up with the principle so so here's just three short guidelines that i really wanted to talk about when we do bible reading plan and that is first pick one reading plan and stick to it oftentimes we go oh this plan is cool this plan is new i want to do this i want to do that at least i am very much like that anything that's new and cool it's like oh i want to do that but no try to stick to one specific Bible reading plan. If you're new to Bible reading plans, I suggest picking a short one. That way you can complete it. If that means reading only one book, that is great. Doing the he slash she reads, that would be a great idea to just get started into the habit before you go out to the whole three year Bible reading plan. Okay, so start small. Um, number two, carve out specific time of the day to do this. Make it a date almost. Like put it in your calendar and say, this is where I'm going to sit down and read it. Because oftentimes I know if I don't put it in my calendar, it's not going to happen. And even then, sometimes I struggle to make it happen even if it's in my calendar. So put that into your calendar and say, I'm going to read um, these passages at this time. Grace, if you miss a day, um, just give you some grace. This isn't about being legalistic. It's about building the discipline of scripture reading. Um, so one suggestion that I have when you do miss a day is either make it up sometime later, but do not put pressure on yourself to make it up. You don't want to become legalistic about this. But I do sometimes when I do miss a little bit or I get a little behind, I do try to carve out more time to make it up. If that doesn't happen, then just give yourself grace and say, okay, maybe we just have to extend this out a little bit longer. And that's okay. Um, the only danger of extending it out is sometimes if you keep doing that over and over, it can become very depressing a little bit. I'm wondering if you'll ever finish it. But I think at that point, you really need to sit down with yourself and pray about it with God and 
talk about your struggles with really making this a daily habit. Now, if you're doing a plan like the 88 day Bible reading plan and you just realize that's too intense for you, then it's perfectly fine to slow down. Especially when you realize you're in an intense Bible reading plan, it's perfectly fine to extend that Bible reading plan to the average, which is usually one year Bible reading plan is very doable. You keep the principle in mind. The reading, the, the the idea of reading the Bible is because we want to read God's word. We want to hear from God. We want to understand who he is. And we know who God is. Then we learn how we shall ought, shall, and then ought to respond to him. See, the Bible is first and foremost about God. And it's his message to us or what we need to know about him. And therefore, we learn how we shall respond to him. So you might be wondering... Lizzie, what type of Bible reading plan do you do or have done in the past? I have done my own Bible reading plan where I've decided to read Proverbs, uh, one chapter of Proverbs, I believe. I've done that before um, for one day. Um, I have done a little bit of just picking random books and just start reading it from first from start to finish. Not specifically a specific plan necessarily, but I try to read at least one chapter before when I've done that. Right now, I am currently doing um, a chronological one where I read the entire Bible chronologically. So I started that in August, and so I am still in the Old Testament, and I will be until very close to the end. Um, but yes, I'm doing the chronological Bible. I wanted to do that last year, but I didn't do that. I just did the one-year standard um, Bible reading. But even then, I kind of just because I was going a little bit slower when, say, my church is going through the book of John. I would just read the book of John with them and then do something else. We do the book of John and then continue with my Bible reading plan and just go with that thing. So this is the first time I think I've ever stuck to an Asher plan, but the goal was the same. The goal for last year was just to read the entire Bible. The goal for this year is a little bit more stricter. I want to read it in chronological order. So... Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So um, the Bible translation I have read the Bible in is through is New King James Version. And I've also read it. I've also read it in the English Standard Version, which is what I'm doing as well, too. And so, yeah, that's pretty much what I do. Um, sometimes if I have a little bit more time in the morning, one thing I'm trying to get in my habit is um, using my my new Greek New Testament book and just um, going through verses that I have memorized or verses that are easy to read and kind of just getting myself familiar with it. That's just something extra. I don't know why I'm saying that in the video, maybe because it gives me some accountability. And that's the last thing I want to say is when you do Bible reading plans, one of the best things to really help you is to have accountability. Um, is to, if you can't find accountability, a lot of people I've seen on the internet is just tell the world that you're doing it. And that kind of gives you, you find other people who are doing it with you while you're doing that. So maybe that's why I told you that I wanted to spend a little bit, at least read one verse in Greek, or at least try to read one verse in Greek to kind of keep that still going in my mind. Um, today I read uh, 1 John 1, 1 through 5, a little bit stumbled over reading it. So please don't think I actually read it fluently. <laughs> but I did attempt so um, this morning, and then I read my normal, um, my normal daily reading plan for the chronological version. So I think that's pretty much it. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I really hope this encourages you to go out there to set a new year resolution to read the Bible um, at least daily, um, to daily spend your time in the Word, even if it's only one verse a day. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, put that bell button to get notifications so you never miss another video again. And one last thing, um, the program for the new U YouTube videos will be back to its regular scheduled program to Friday at 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time or Daylight Saving Times if we're in Daylight Savings Time. So, yeah, um, please comment down below if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys next time. God bless you. Goodbye. Bye.